having last grace the Formula One circuit over half a century ago. Aston Martin is back and raring to go with four-time world champion Sebastian Vettel accompanying the up-and-coming driver Lance Stroll. They're aiming to back up style with substance. Well, I'm delighted to say his dad joins us. Lauren Stroll is uh, the boss of the company he owns it, the chairman of both Aston Martin and the Aston Martin Cognizant uh, Formula One racing team. A very warm welcome to the show. So the return to Formula One for the first time in a generation, why is the obvious question? Uh, uh, thank you for having me, firstly. Uh, the answer to that question is, Part of the heritage of Aston Martin, what's in the DNA of Aston Martin, the company was created, was all about its racing history and its racing heritage, and it was bringing to life race cars onto the road. Um, this is now returning to the DNA of the company. You know, we're, we're building the greatest British iconic premier luxury brand in the world, and a very big part of that is through our racing heritage and returning to Formula One, the pinnacle of racing gives us the technology to bring down into our road cars, which is critically important, and also embraces 2.3 billion fans that watch the race on an annual basis. And number one, sons in the driving seat. Uh, yes, uh, he, uh, he earned that last year by taking pole in Turkey, several podiums, um, had a bit of bad luck uh, being pushed off the track a few times in a blown tire, but... Uh, he earned his way into it, so it'll be a, a great, great combination of, of young talent and, uh, and a veteran experience with Sebastian. They hopefully will push, push each other along very well. Everyone loves Aston Martin around the world, James Bond's favorite company car, but of course, um, uh, off the movies, it's no stranger to financial trouble in its rearview mirror. Um, I think the company's gone bankrupt six or seven times. Does the road ahead look any different? Um, the road ahead is dramatically different. So I became executive chairman and majority shareholder at the end of April last year. And um, as you rightfully point out, what's in the rearview mirror is in the rearview mirror. As we demonstrated, the, the first quarter under my management that we could uh, make a difference was the fourth quarter of this year, which we sold a positive EBITDA of 47 million pounds. We also have a very clear roadmap and strategy of introduction of new models, which commenced with the DBX, which is a critically acclaimed great success uh, in, the, in the luxury SUV sector. Our, our, our order book going forward is, is ahead of our projections for both DBX and for our traditional sports car range. Now we have a full lineup of mid-engines, which technology coming out of our Formula One car to come on to, uh, to our showroom floors in the next two, two and a half years. So there's a clear roadmap with a very big strategy behind it. Part of that uh, is with Formula One as a marketing platform to push the brand forward through technology and innovation. Now, you say you want to turn Aston Martin into a British Ferrari, and I know that you're a fanatical collector of Ferraris. What do you mean when you say you want to turn Aston into Ferrari? Uh, I need to correct you. It was not me who said I want to turn Aston into a Ferrari. It was a BBC reporter who asked me a couple days ago, if I was trying to turn Aston into a British Ferrari. And my response to him, which uh, will be the same to you, uh, we have our own plan. Aston Martin is Aston Martin. Um, we, we have a 108-year history. We are going to be building 10,000 cars to £2 billion revenue and 500 million EBITDA within the next four years. Um, we make the most beautiful cars. We will have the technology to match that beauty. And we have a Formula One team to market. So... Ferrari does what Ferrari does. Um, we have our own plan, and I really don't look over their shoulder, and I don't think they're looking over mine. The results for most car companies over the last 18 months have been pretty ugly, whether you're running Mercedes or Aston Martin or whatever. I want to ask you, and I appreciate you haven't been in charge very long, but just how bad has the pandemic been for Aston? Um, listen, it, it was no worse for us than it was for, as you rightly point out, any other uh, automotive manufacturer. It actually may be circumstances a little more favorable for us. Um, we, we, we had a bit of an inventory issue. Too many cars were made through 2018, and we closed the factory due to pandemic, which gave an opportunity for those inventories to happily be cleared through channels, which are, are, I can happily report now complete 
as of this quarter. So um, we clearly missed the, 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 the gross margin. We, we, we closed for several months. So um, it was painful, but not any more painful than any of our competitors had to experience, sadly. Governments around the world are motoring towards a world of uh, no emissions and electric cars. I wonder where does a manufacturer of historically thirsty gas guzzlers like Aston sit in this new world, in this new landscape? Um, we are ahead of our competition in that respect. We will have two full electric vehicles, a sports car and an SUV by 2025, which I believe significantly ahead of our competition. In addition, we're introducing electrification to our units uh, in sports cars. Um, Formula One already has the lowest carbon footprint combustion engine in the world which, with an electric component to it. We will be taking that similar uh, technology into our mid-engine programs. So we're well ahead of the curve. We'll have two proper full EV vehicles by 25 and electrification introduced over the next 12 to 18 months. So we're, we're, we're very proud of that technology. Lon Stroll, good luck with your plans and thanks very much for coming on the show.